received the question, if I could say a little bit, about the karmatic effects of a shamanic intervention. So, for instance, if you do a ritual, a shamanic ritual, and the person uh, loses their mental equilibrium and doesn't come out of the ritual very well. Well, to look at that, we really have to analyze karma in a proper way. Karma is composed of four elements. So, first of all, there's the intention. What do we intend to do um, if we do this ritual? Do we intend to help the people or do we intend to hurt the people or part of it? And this is one of the karmatic effects or the karmatic tendencies which we are creating. Then we have to look at the size of the karma. And in general, the more complex the being or the more powerful the being we work with, the more intense the karmatic effect will be. So if I do a ritual for, I don't know, um, a piece of rock, it will have less strong impact um, than if I do it for, for instance, an animal. And if I do it for a human, it will be even stronger. If I do it for a whole group of humans, it will be even stronger. So it is important when you start doing karmatic actions um, to in a way build up the level. So start with things which are very simple. If they go wrong, well, it doesn't harm you very much. It doesn't disturb your own karma very much. Uh, but also if it goes right, there is very little effect. So you sh should first yeah, practice, you could say, almost cheaply uh, with things which cost little, which also benefit little. And when you get skilled enough, you can start working with bigger and bigger objects. So start working with the stones, then plants, then animals, then humans, and ultimately groups of humans. So build it up. Um, and yeah, of course, if things go well, you get a lot of positive karma. If things go bad, you get a lot of negative karma. So it's a little bit like, um, how much do you want to bet? on that action going right. So once we have these two components, we have like our intention and the object on which we will uh, act, then we have actually the process. How will the process go? Does the process go well? Can we actually control the transformation? Can we control the energies in the ritual? Or does it go out of control and can't we master it? Can't we keep the space clear? And this also gives quite a strong effect. And if we do things and we are unskilled at them, then usually, karmatically, our station, our ability to have such powers will decrease. Because we are basically showing and proving to the cosmos that we are not good enough, we are not ready for this kind of stuff. So please demote me and take me down to a level where I can manage. So trying to do two big things too fast can be very limiting, but also self-limitation, like, okay, I, instead of doing rituals with humans, get stuck on working with stones, for instance, yeah, then you're also denying yourself a position you could attain if uh, you would do those things, so you're in a way keeping karmatic rewards from yourself. But it's never a negative thing to do something right. It's always a positive thing. It just doesn't contribute as much if you do something right with the stone as that you would do it right with a group of people. And finally we have the effect. And the effect is largely also not in your hands. So even if you screw up a ritual, ritual horribly, it can be that everybody has learned something and comes out better for it. It can be if you do a ritual perf perfectly that people are actually harmed by it. And, uh, and you're also judged on that. So, and this last part makes it very important to really tune into the group or tune into the subject you're working with. Um, if you're taught to do a ritual in a certain way, well, that's all nice and good and that's all fine. Um, 
but you should never blind yourself. You should always look and adjust yourself, attune yourself. This is also what shamanism is about. Shamanism is not about following the rules, doing everything according to tradition. Um, shamanism is not a written tradition. It is an oral tradition. It is about feeling, it's about noticing, it's about having communion with spirits, with yourself, with the subject you're working with. And out of this communion, new forms arise. And you will feel whether more power or less power is needed and what can and cannot be attained. So a shaman should never be blind and never just do things the way they should be done or the way their teacher does them. Um, this is not the shamanic way. This is a very dogmatic way. And dogmas are fortunately not part of shamanism. They are part of the hermetic tradition. So dogmas really don't belong there. But yeah, and especially this last part, because you can have a certain intention, you can choose the level of power you want to work on. And depending on your skill, the process will or will not go as you think it should, but this is just a learning process. And you should, of course, strive to learn and to expand your boundaries and things going wrong is not necessarily bad uh, because then the next time you will do it you will in a way compensate for the bad karma you created by things going wrong by those same things going right the next time you do them and by proving in a way that you can now do things and have mastered them also your karma will improve and you will be able to inhabit a form or to unlock powers which will yeah, allow you to do what you can do. The last part though, the effects are very, very tricky. Because indeed if you allow yourself to yeah, work on a person who is mentally unstable or not very strong or something like this, then the, person, the effect you will have on that person might not be good because the other person might not be able to understand what you're giving them or might not, might not be able to handle the power you unlock in them. From a shamanic perspective this is not a problem. Shamans believe in that every spirit needs to master its own incarnation. So if you unlock a very big emotion, a lot of anger, a lot of hatred, a lot of sadness in that person, well it's still that person's own spirit's responsibility to learn how to deal with that. And it is good because now they are confronted with their problem and the spirit will have to learn how to cope with it, have to learn how to deal with it. So from a shamanic perspective it is not a bad thing to worsen a person's situation or to create more challenges on that person's path. From a shamanic perspective it's also quite tough because it is that person's own responsibility. So if the person fails and in a way becomes a prey for other people who will abuse their emotional weakness or their mental weakness, well, so be it. This is nature. The weak die, the strong survive. The weak are the food for the strong. And in that way, even the weak are contributing to growth. Maybe not their own growth, but the strong can grow more by taking the powers and the talents and the energies of the weak and thereby they can develop themselves. So there is always some form of development going on. Um, so from a shamanic perspective there is really no problem whatsoever. But if you look at it from a karmatic perspective there is a problem. Because from the karmatic perspective what they look at is if you in a way try to create a karma the karma is at the strongest when it is harmonious, when you have an intention and an object and a process and a result and they're all in one line. So you do what you're supposed to do to that type of being and it will have the result you want it to have. And this is, you could say, perfect karma. And this perfect karma will lead to your, in a way, being elevated or having this same capability 
uh, accessible to you in the next incarnation. And if you do things imperfectly, um, so you have a certain intention and yeah, it doesn't come out that way, um, then karmatically it is yeah, not that successful. So having undesired or undes unsought after results uh, is in a way bad karma, uh, also for a shaman doing it. It's different also if as a shaman you can have also a negative intention, you can do a ritual in order to steal the power from all the participants. Well, if this is your intention, you do it on a large group of people, you do the process well and it has the effect you desire, then this is very strong karma. And in the next incarnation you will again have this power to leech power out of many of your yeah, students, followers or just random groups who you can get to participate in your rituals. So karma is really not about punishing or limiting a person's actions. It is about um, when a person has attained a certain level then they will be able to retain those skills if those skills get embedded deeply enough in the spirit, in the personality which will carry on to the next incarnation. So karma is in a way about building up um, certain qualities which will go incarnation, from incarnation to incarnation and those qualities can be positive qualities, they can be negative qualities, they can be powers and they can also be limitations. Because if I screw up every ritual I try to do then in the next incarnation I won't have an, any ability to perform any rituals anymore. So karma can also be very much a limitation if you fail too often. So ultimately to create good karma it is most important that you are successful and that you are skillful from the shamanic perspective. If you go a little bit more complex and you want to go to a specific place, you would have to decide, do I want to go to a specific place in the light cosmos or in the dark cosmos? If you want to go to a specific place in the light cosmos, you have to make sure that every action you take will actually purify you or lead to the purification of another. And this yeah, method of purification and ultimately will ultimately lead to higher stations in that cosmos because there is a greater range of energies from low to high which you will be able to work with. If you are looking to change your station in the dark cosmos it is about authority, it is about power, it is about uh, control and the more of those qualities you develop the greater your station in the dark cosmos will be. And it is very possible for a single action to have an effect on your station in both cosmoses. If you attain power by but lose purity, you will gain status in dark cosmos but lose it in the light one. And the opposite way, if you gain purity by losing power, then you go down in the dark cosmos and up in the light one. But it's also possible to have actions where you can go up in both cosmoses if you do things in such a way that both your authority, power, control increase and your purity increase. And in general I think it's very wise to be a little bit ahead in the light cosmos compared to your station in the dark cosmos. Because powers in the dark cosmos tend to want to manifest themselves quite strongly and having any power without having enough purity uh, within yourself will mean that the power's desire to manifest itself will use your incarnation to manifest itself. Your power will not be contained within you and things will start happening around you and because it is your energy body which is causing these things you will also get the results of these things which your energy body is doing. So lack of intention, lack of control does not mean lack of karma. If you do things because you are sad or angry or whatever, it still means it is done by you and you will have the full karmatic consequences of those. 
So a shaman should always have very good self-control and use the emotions but not be used by them. And the same with attachments. Use your attachments, use your love, use your compassion, but don't be used by them. And that will help you to keep a stable balance also between the light and the dark cosmos. Because if you don't have this and you attain power, then it is very hard to maintain your purity if your power grows. Because the dark cosmos will manifest itself quite easily and your loss of purity will go quite rapidly and often unnoticed by yourself or even by others around you because people tend to look more at power, at skill um, than at purity and people tend to equate these things. People tend to think that when a person is very skillful and powerful that they are a good person, that they are a moral person but shamanism teaches us that this is usually not true. It's a completely separate issue and that's hanging out with people who are more pure than yourself is actually more useful than hanging out with people who are more powerful than yourself and a lot safer as well. I hope this advice will uh, help you in your shamanic journeys and make sure you don't get into any karmatic trouble.